Okay, sound good? All right, great. Um, hi everybody, I'm Gabe Paez from The Wild. We're gonna get this webinar started. It's so exciting. Um, this is the first one of these that we have done and I'm really excited to be here, excited to uh, talk about immersive collaboration, talk about um, Revit a bit and really show you The Wild. Um, so bear with me as we get this started and dive right in. So first let's lay out the plan. Uh, we're going to start with um, overviewing what immersive collaboration is and um, why we feel like it's super important for um, the AEC industry. Then we're going to move into really focusing on Revit to the wild and how you do get just the, the bare bones setup going. We'll talk about collaborating or inviting collaborators into that space and how you can work with them. Talk a little bit about iteration, materials, ideation. Uh, augmented reality, and then we'll wrap up um, with 15 minutes at the end uh, with a Q&A. So I would urge you as we go along, please, please, please just go ahead and start asking those questions um, as they come up. Um, Clay, um, our marketing director, is going to be moderating those questions and will hand them off um, to me once we get to the Q&A section. So don't hold them in, just go ahead and type them right into the Zoom uh, Q&A chat. And um, once we get to that section, we'll, we'll start going through them and answer all that we can in the time that we have can. But I'll try to keep us um, prompt and ending right on time at 1045. Uh, so let's dive right in. And um, I wanna start by talking a little bit about virtual reality. So many of you probably had this experience the first time you put that headset on, it was like, um, you know, overwhelming. And you have this moment where you're like, wow, this is, Super cool. And I would argue, you know, that's that's our real challenge that we're up against right now is is really to to separate and show how how this super cool technology can um, really elevate to the next level that, that we know it can to be super useful, super foundational, super functional, efficient um, and and ultimately change the game and improve our lives. So at the wild and as we were talking about this you know prior to founding the company we really focused in on uh, what i believe is one of the the primary points of pain in this industry that um immersive uh, or especially virtual reality um and i would say immersive can really address and that is collaboration um so this uh, what is kind of a buzzword in the industry and and i would argue one of the most uh, misused misunderstood uh, words in software. Like what is collaboration? What is good collaboration? Is it um, chat? Is it sharing of files? Is it better PDFs? Or is this the gold standard for communication? Everyone sitting around a table like sleeves rolled up, uh, working together to solve problems in a conference room. You know, I would say, I would argue that that is what we think of um, as the gold standard, but is that really the best Form, is it the most effective form of collaboration specifically for this industry where, um, you know, we're building environments, we're, we're building out experiences that will play out in those environments, we're building structures. Um, can we evaluate those effectively? Can we make good decisions about those in this context um, within a conference room at that gold standard of collaboration? So, um, we were sort of centering in on, okay, maybe this, this software, maybe this, um, this idea of virtual reality and augmented reality can really address this solution um, or this, this problem. Maybe we can improve, um, improve what we have now. And what I sort of focus in on is all of the current benefits of this technology. So yeah, it could be better visualization. It could be better simulation. But what I really found is that the real revolution is transportation. The ability to transport people across distances, um, for sure, but more foundationally, the, uh, the ability to transport them into a shared Im immersive environment. So um, let's talk about all the different ways that we can revolutionize transportation. The transportation of people, literally moving people um, rather than more efficiently than we can by flying for business travel across the world into, you know, in an airplane or or even moving in a super efficient uh, electric vehicle. How can we do that more efficiently, efficiently by virtualizing that transportation so that it, it happens in an instant and with less resources than could otherwise be possible? 
the transportation of places. How, how do I literally uh, virtualize physical places and transport them into the same environment with these people? And the third thing I would argue is the transportation of ideas. How do we take, um, you know, we, we focused on, on being able to vir virtualize our ideas into, into um, BIM models, um, into all sorts of different software-based ideas, but how do we transport those ideas with those physical places and those people into a shared environment? And so I would argue um, this is where all of these different realities step in. Virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, extended reality, the, ex the, the reality soup that lets us redefine um, how, we can, how, how we can experience a real um, environment um, amongst groups of people. But, but I, would, I would argue, uh, don't get all caught up in all of these, all of these naming, uh, all these different types of uh, experiences, all these different technologies. The important thing to stay focused isn't all of the different realities and what is better than other and the different use cases. The important thing to stay focused on is that all of these experiences are moving toward a new idea of being immersive, of software being immersive, of software centering around the person rather than the device. Um, we don't, I think that all of us inherently know that, you know, our technology today, um, you know, sitting at these desks, typing over computers, um, leaning into our cell phones, looking at them up close, they, they sort of foundationally don't feel good to us. They, they, don't, they don't necessarily, they improve our capabilities, but they're not really humane. They're not really human in a sense because we are going to them and sort of catering to these devices because we need them for our work, but not necessarily we live in their world, not necessarily them living in our world. And so all of these, all of these technologies, um, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, are trying to redefine that. They're trying to flip the switch and saying, can we use this idea of an immersive experience to bring those technologies to us, let, let them live on our terms, face first, me in, in an environment, just as I experience physical reality, but with this combination or with this added capability of being able to transport people, places, and ideas into a shared virtual space. Now that could be really connected to a physical space in, if, you're, if you're edging toward augmented reality, or it could be really totally virtualized in the form of virtual reality or anywhere in between this spectrum. But let's stay focused on immersive as the bigger idea and not these individual technologies. So I founded The Wild and um, you know, built it around this idea. Let's improve collaboration through better transportation and this idea of immersive. And so The Wild is an immersive collaboration platform for teams to experience their work together from anywhere in virtual and augmented reality. Um, and I want to show you what that looks like because, you know, it's one thing to talk about this vision for, for how we can do these things better. It's, it's another thing to really show you how you could implement this today in a very simple way and then gradually improve um, your capabilities by, by implementing immersive collaboration more and more through your process. So to show you this, I am going to start in, let's see here, okay. I'm gonna start in a familiar place, Revit. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm sure you're all familiar with this interface. Um, this is a standard Revit sample file. I'm gonna start in a 3D view in, in an overview of this space and just show you how easy it is to, to take this space and bring it right into the wild. Um, so to do that, first I'm gonna switch over to a browser. Okay, so um, starting on our website here, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, there is a downloads link and that downloads link will take you to this page uh, you can download the Windows app, or, or if you're on a Mac, it'll go into the Mac app right here. You can download that right from here. Um, then basically download our Revit add-in right here as well. Moving back, once you have that add-in installed, we can move back over into Revit and it will show up right here on your add-ins tab. So if I wanna get this, um, this view into the wild, it's just as easy as clicking on this view in the wild, connecting in there, 
Uh, you can choose the 3D view that you'd like to do. I'm just going to start with this simple overview and create a space from that. It asked me what team I want to do that in. I'm going to say the demo team. And, um, and basically, it starts crunching at that. Now, what's literally happening here is the, the model is being uh, optimized, um, distributed to our cloud, and imported, you'll see right here, into the wild. Now, you'll see it's finished. You see how, how quickly that happened. And now you can see I've got this overview space within one of my projects in the wild. So I'm going to start by, by sort of showing you, um, introing what the, the basic structure of the wild here. So you've got uh, teams on the left that you can belong to multiple teams inside of the wild. Then you've got um, your projects within, within that team that I'm on here, which is the demo team. Then you have within each of these projects, you can have spaces, uh, collections of assets. You can have images, videos, models. Um, if you're interested about that, we can get into, um, or you possibly will do another webinar just about content collection and uh, management inside of the wild. But, um, and let us know if you'd be interested in, in seeing more about that. But for right now, I'm gonna really stay focused on this Revit to the wild workflow. So I'm going, you'll see here that um, this sample house project was created and the overview was, overview 3D view was brought into that. And so to get into this view, all I do is I can click onto it and you can see this space will load in here. So one thing to sort of understand, I'm showing this on one computer, but an important thing to understand is that this has uploaded into our cloud. So now anyone with access to this team um, can access this space from wherever they are. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to show you a little bit about, or I'm going to show you how you would invite collaborators to, to work inside of this space. So um, jumping down here back to um, the content management side of the wild, I'm going to click on the three dots here to the side of the space and click on the share panel. So there are multiple things you can do here. Um, now, by default, any team members that are on my team have access to these projects inside of the wild. So um, I can just copy and invite to this space and share it to, with them. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can invite outside collaborators. So you can um, type their email in here and, um, and give, uh, manage their permission level. Can they view this space? Are they like a client that you're sharing with? Or can they edit this space? Um, and then you can share that directly with them. You can add a note also that will show up in the invite. Hi, join me in this space. And then click to share that. Now, Nick is already on my team. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just copy a link to this space. And I'm going to switch myself over here to, um, to Slack, which I have open right here. And I am going to paste this link in here. <laughs> so um, basically, this will ask uh, the people inside of here. They can click on this link. And, um, and basically, that will come back into the wild, go into the space. And they will join us here. So Anyone with, um, with that link now has access to um, come into the wild. It, it makes it that easy to invite both internal and external collaborators. You'll see, see both Nick um, and Melissa, who I just invited to this space, are going to be joining me from virtual reality. Oh, the other thing, like, oh, OK, perfect. Hello there. How are you? Hi. Great. Um, so um, one interesting thing to note is that uh, Anyone with access to this space um, can access on any of our devices. I'm just in regular 2D mode on a Windows computer here. I don't have a headset in front of me. And so I'm able to fly around this space. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to switch to that view. OK, I'm able to fly around this space without a headset. Um, Melissa and Nick are experiencing VR. That's how we can see them, um, see their hands. We can hear them talking. We can um, see them move around. Um, now, Melissa can teleport herself down into the, uh, onto the balcony here and then summon me to her position. So um, if, if I don't want to be controlling my own position, she can bring me around. Go ahead and just teleport me through this model like, like you would maybe present it. She can bring me to various positions, and we can talk about these different, um, 
these different moments inside of the app. Perfect. But also, I have my own ability to be able to navigate this space. Um, I'm actually using a game controller. Uh, that's really nice, especially for presentations like this, because you can fly really smoothly around and create a nice um, immersive experience, um, even for people in just a 2D mode and not in headset. But you can also fly around just with a regular mouse and keyboard. Um, you don't need any sort of special controllers to be able to navigate this space. Great. Um, OK, so let's look at what would it would look like to iterate on this space, though. Um, and the first form iteration I'm going to show you is if I want to make a change directly in Revit. Um, OK, so to make a change in Revit, I'm going to switch back over to Revit. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab this window right here, highlight this window, and delete it. So maybe we don't own a window there for some reason. I can then hit View in the Wild. You'll see that now I have an option to update that space. And um, I can hit that Update button, go back over to the Wild. And again, what's happening is it's crunching that down. It's uh, bringing that space into the Wild. And um, you'll see that update out in this space in just a second here. You also see, um, while that's updating, both Melissa and Nick are making changes um, to their own, they're laying their own annotations in the space. So they have the, the, the control to, um, to make those changes as, as well, um, even while an update is happening. So, so this is sort of core to understanding this, is, um, is that you can basically make, everyone participating in a space, is able to make changes to that space in real time. They can annotate the space. Um, they can annotate basically on top of the Revit model. And, th and this is a core thing to understand as well, um, that um, their ability to make these changes, it it's not necessarily coming back and changing what's happening inside of the Revit model. Um, it's happening as a layer on top of the Revit model. So we, we don't want you to be um, to, to have this fear that you're going to be uh, destroying um, the model in any way if you make a change from the wild. Um, we want you to be able to um, have a source of truth in Revit that then you can push those updates into the wild to make updates in real time. So, um, okay, great. So you see um, that update now pushed itself into the wild and we can come back up here and you can see that that window is gone. Now, uh, Melissa and Nick both, you know, are, their experience of this is that now that window is gone as well. It's even though they're in different locations, they're not on this computer with me, the, the window is disappeared for everyone. Now, what else can we do? Well, we can make change to materiality. Um, going back over to, to Revit for a minute, the wild supports um, the physical-based materials in Revit 20, um, I believe, 19 and above. And so um, let's go ahead and experiment with one of those in here to see what that looks like. So we'll go to the Modify tab. We'll bring up our materials. Um, we will grab, what did I name this? Yeah, so like maybe this siding. And we'll apply it to the side of the building here. We'll say done there, save that, and then go back here and push that update to the wild. Um, so same thing right there. You can see it did its work. And we go back over. It's updating the space. Also, I should note that updates happen faster um, than there's like a, a lot of caching that happens so that you'll get faster updates the more, the more you do that. So. A little bit hard to see, but now we have this metal surface here. You can see the, I'm not sure, I'm sure the zoom was like crunching that down, but that material showed up in the wild. Okay, so um, what other forms of um, interaction can we do? Well, um, right now this model is, is primarily all as, um, it's showing up as one giant model in the wild. You couldn't make individual modifications. You could make additive modifications to the Revit model, but you couldn't necessarily play with changing the model on its own. But we have that capability as well, and I want to show you how it works. Let's say you want to play with potentially um, moving the walls, like being able to grab individual walls and uh, manipulate their positions. So I'm going to go back over here to, the, the, or to Revit and show you how you would do that. 
Um, if you go to the Ma Manage tab and go to Project Parameters, you'll see that there is a parameter called the Wild Movable. Also, if you need instructions on how to do this um, in the future, I'm going to go switch over to show you where you can get those instructions. Um, you'll see here on our help site, which you get to by going to thewild.com slash docs, um, you can search for, excuse me, Revit materials and come right here, which gives you a step-by-step -step of how to basically make objects movable from Revit inside of the wild. So to do this, uh, click on that project parameters tab, open this project parameters dialog box. Um, you can then modify this um, parameter. And you'll see basically what this does um, is right now I've got furniture uh, marked and this says basically furniture is movable inside of the wild. But I can take this, um, let's go down here and check uh, walls. With walls checked, I can come back over here and go to my add-in, push those updates. And again, that pushes over and then go back over here to the wild. You'll see it is pushing that update to our cloud. And once it is finished, basically now you have the ability to select or anyone inside of VR in the wild has the ability to select any of these um, those walls and modify them, or and to then move them, which you see right there. Um, so, can you guys like explode that out? Perfect. And now that wall is movable inside of the wild. Um, so the use case for this is. Um, I mean, primarily the use case interiors groups like to do this. If you've placed furniture in Revit, um, you can then modify that furniture inside of the wild. Um, sometimes for walls or beams, it's useful. Um, it just depends on how you want to present and work with your content in the wild. Uh, you'll also see there, they're right now playing around with the vis visibility of layers. Um, can one of you actually come down here to the ground and show me the way that panel looks? Great, um, so thank you, Melissa. So Melissa is actually showing us the um, uh, the layer tool, which allows you to select and toggle on and off different layers. Um, again, this is happening for everybody um, inside of the space simultaneously, for, so this is great for presentations. Um, we also have a, a, a BIM tool, um, or we call it an information tool, which lets you um, lets you browse BIM data for any object inside of the wild. So it allowed, you can see there she's pointing at, um, it looks like the roof, and it's able to show you um, the data attached to that, um, that object um, directly from Revit visualized in the wild. Um, okay, so let me show you, this is a good look at how, uh, how you would collaborate on a single model, but we can also move between models, models really efficiently. Um, and to do that inside of the wild, we're moving, changing between spaces. Uh, to show you that, I want Melissa or Nick to please drag out the Audubon space. Um, and basically, uh, you have access to a content management um, portal inside of the wild. It gives you access to all these different spaces. Uh, you can use those. Um, you can grab out these portals and then put them over your head. Go ahead, put us inside of it to transport us into this new place. You'll see that that space streamed right in here um, really efficiently. And now we can all here travel together into this new project. This is really helpful for, um, you know, viewing other portfolio items, like going through your history really efficiently of different projects you've executed um, in inside of a showcase. Uh, also, it's good for showing optionality. You can push different views to different different views from section views from Revit into different uh, spaces and then move through them to show different uh, A, B, C options. Um, there are all sorts of use cases when you can you can really transfer between all of these different spaces efficiently. Uh, Melissa is also showing us how easily you can bring um, Entourage into a space. Um, this is an alpha video just to you know show a scale model that's more interesting than just images. 
you know, you can bring these videos into the, the wild, you can bring in um, 3D models into the wild, you can sketch all sorts of different, um, different functionality. <laughs> and yes, that is me. I am in that video. We recorded those in our space. Okay, guys, um, can, can you take us into that, um, that last space so that we can show augmented reality? And then we're going to get to our Q&A. So augmented reality, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, what's the role of augmented reality in immersive collaboration? Um, it's really easy uh, um, to answer that question for me. Augmented reality and the, the purpose of it is if you are in a, a physical situation where you want to be closely connected to the physical room that you're inside of. So if you're literally on site, um, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a physical, in the physical space where this, this um, unit is going to be built, it's really useful to be able to augment that, that um, BIM model directly onto the site. And that is the role of augmented reality. So to show you this, I'm actually going to switch over to um, uh, this other, oh, come on. <laughs> of course, let me see if I can make this work, the live version. Otherwise, I will just show you a video of it. All right, um, I'm just going to show you a video of it in action because my connection to my iPad is not working properly. But you'll get the point. So basically, this is what it looks like to be um, looking through an iPad um, or iPhone into this model in the wild. Uh, you can see you can actually physically move around through it, um, and you can see the camera view is actually showing this room that we recorded this footage inside of. So. Um, there's an amazing ability to basically take this model all the way onto an iPad and connect it into um, this physical room that we're inside of. One of the use cases, like I said, is if you're on site and you want to augment that model onto into the physical space. Um, but also there's a use case of honestly, um, not everybody wants to put the headset on and that's fine. Um, we want to provide accessibility for, for anyone to participate in that space as immersively as possible. And sometimes that means allowing them to um, access, you know, handing them an iPad inside of a meeting, uh, especially when you're not really familiar with each other, is is a much lower threshold, like so social threshold, than putting a headset on them. And so it really provides a nice way for them to still physically immerse themselves and walk around that environment um, without going all the way into headset. Um, so there's great benefit of having you know all of this content in the cloud and then being able to access it from virtual reality or augmented reality or mixed reality all of, or desktop in mac or windows all together um so with that we're right at 10 30 and to be respectful of your time i want to jump right into the q a um it looks like we have some questions yes we do okay so clay is going to relay those over Okay, we have a question here from Toshi. Okay. And, uh, Toshi is asking, what AR devices do we currently support? What AR devices do we currently support? We support any AR kit compatible iOS device. So that's going to be um, iPads, any of the, the newer uh, generation iPads or iPhones. Um, you you have basically an equivalent experience of the wild on 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 any of those devices um it, i guess that's an important thing I, I didn't really say when talking about augmented reality is um that all of our platforms let you view into the space on the same connected terms so if you're joining from augmented reality and someone else is joining inside of the space in virtual reality, you can see them in virtual reality. You can talk to them, or sorry, inside of the space, you can talk to them just like any of our other platforms. So there's like this ubiquitous access to this, this persistent space in the cloud and um, participants can join from whatever device that they have access to. Okay, I have another question from Alexander. Design options in your model, can they be applied in different portals? Design options uh, being applied in different portals, yes. Um, so let me go actually over to Revit to answer this question. Um, so I think you guys saw here um, when I initially opened this that basically you can attach, you can import any 3D view. 
So this is commonly how design options are approached right now in the wild. I, I guess you could also do it with layer visibility. Um, you saw that inside of the wild, inside of a single space, you can still toggle on and off layers. So that's one way within a single space to, to do design options. Um, the second way would be to use uh, multiple, multiple section, sorry, multiple 3D views inside of Revit take all of those into multiple spaces inside of the wild. And then just like we were showing you how we could portal between spaces, then you can, you could together in, in terms of your uh, design review or presentation, you can portal together into each of those options. Um, so both are possible ways that, you know, our customers are using to, to show optionality. Okay. We have several questions here, so we'll see how many we can get through. Okay. Todd has asked, do you support Maya or Unity for collaboration? Do we support Maya or Unity for collaboration? Um, uh, we, I believe actually we do have a workflow from um, Unity. Maya, we do not have a, uh, we do not support at this time. Um, we're really trying to, 3D Studio is a great way to come in um, for those sort of like, if you wanna bake lighting or get high end visuals, um, at this time, and actually, can you can you verify that with with Misha in the chat? Sure. <laughs> um, we'll get back to that if I'm actually answering oh, that no, incorrectly. Okay, so um, what does we Misha have a say? GLTF exporter. Oh, a GLTF exporter. Thank you, Misha. Our product manager is watching and helping me Thank for the you, ones. Misha. <laughs> so yes, I guess the answer is I answered that incorrectly. Um, there is a GLTF exporter for um, Maya that you could you could bring it to a GLTF file and then import that into the wild. Uh, GLTF is a great format for bringing in content, especially from programs like Maya and 3D Studio, which have um, uh, PBR materials because you can get those high end materials rather than using like an FBX or OBJ file as an import type from those applications. Okay, so. Evan is asking, when objects are copied into the wild, can they be synced back to Revit, use case, moving, copying furniture? Um, no, they cannot at this time. And the reason being, you know, this is often asked, um, uh, but the reason being at this point is we want to keep, um, we want it, we don't want to basically, we want you to feel like you can experiment with changes inside of the wild without, um, without those changes affecting the Revit model. Now, what we would suggest is, uh, you probably saw them using our comment tool and our, um, uh, our comment tool and our um, annotation tool, or sorry, and our camera tool to be able to basically capture um, changes that are made inside of a space in the wild. And then there's a PDF export. Um, actually, do we have one of these on this computer? I can show them. Yeah, I do. Nice. Thank you. I had forgotten about this. We were prepared. Um, so I'm going to actually show you what, oops, <laughs> I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay. So this is what basically a, um, uh, an export of comments from the wild looks like. Um, it shows up as this PDF where you can capture all of the changes that you want, want to actually execute on bring that back and then we would we would recommend you layer those back into into Revit um, at this time. Now, we do have some bi-directional capabilities in our in our product pipeline um, that uh, a lot of our customers have asked for and um, that we are excited, you know, we've got some special stuff in store in store this year. I will say at the Wild, um, we really prioritize customer feedback. Um, we provide access to our um, our, our um, ro roadmap to our customers and allow them to um, suggest uh, improvements. And we really, at this point, want to have a really tight cycle of taking that feedback and rolling it into the product. And a lot of even the tools we released um, last year are directly asked for and requested from some of our customers. Um, anything else, Clay? Yes. Andre would like to know, are you planning to develop the wild for mixed reality headsets such as HoloLens or Magic Loop? Mixed reality headsets, absolutely. Um, we, yes. The simple answer is that yes, we are interested in developing the wild for mixed reality headsets. It fits very cleanly into our model. Um, you know, it's just another, it's another platform to view into these spaces. And um, we, 
are we feel like the whole industry is right on the cusp of mixed reality really becoming a viable um, platform for us to implement on. Part of that is in our confidence around um, that there's a level of comfort and value on every single platform that we deliver. And that's how we look at bringing on, um, bringing on new devices. Um, I will just say that absolutely, yes, that is something that we are interested in and, um, and moving toward. Uh, Luis would like to know any other applications besides Revit that can connect to the wild? Yes, there are a lot of applications outside of Revit. I've mostly focused this presentation just on Revit and Revit users, um, but there's a full list on our site of all of um, the, the file formats you can import into the wild. I believe it's something like uh, 13 uh, different file formats. Um, and so you can, there's, there's generally a path for most applications to get that content inside. We've really focused in terms of our, um, our direct um, add-on integrations in nailing the Revit workflow and also um, nailing into SketchUp. Um, but I would uh, please stay tuned for additional releases to come out um, in especially 2020. Um, the other thing is BIM 360, which I didn't talk about at all, but um, we'll probably, we are probably our next webinar will be around the BIM 360 workflow because we are so excited about that. We delivered that right at the end of 2019. And basically, if you are a firm using BIM 360, that is, I would say, the best way to utilize Revit or any other, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I talk with my hands, any other application um, uh, that you're bringing those models into BIM 360 inside of the wild. Because what happens when you use BIM 360 is uh, if you're storing that file on BIM 360 docs, you can access it any of those files directly in the wild and create spaces from them. And it'll create a persistent connection to that space in BIM 360. So if you push updates to BIM 360, they will automatically update your space in the wild and there's no added step. Um, and ultimately that's where we are headed is in trying to eliminate the import and the export step and try to create these direct integrations between cloud platforms like BIM 360 with your spaces in the wild. Okay, uh, we have so many questions, so we're gonna have to do a rapid fire round here. Okay, sure. <laughs> Can you have a custom space when you initially open the wild? Can you have a custom space when you initially open the wild? Oh, I, I see. The So that question is probably centered around um, this initial, we call it the workshop um, that, you, that you jump into. Um, at this time, this space cannot be directly customizable customized, but I will say we do have customers who customize it themselves you, because you can easily bring um, assets out into this space and then just scale them up. So number one, putting uh, your own logo on the wall or um, create, putting furniture into this space. We even have some, um, some customers that use this space as like a, a meeting room um, in and of itself without even having to teleport yourself immersively into the space. Because honestly, oftentimes conference rooms are at a premium inside of these firms. So yes, you can bring content out into this, um, you know, not necessarily just at one-to-one -one scale inside of on the, what we call the, um, the artboard here, but into the workshop space as well. Okay, a couple more questions. Uh, one question I can answer. Uh, when's our next webinar? We have not picked the date yet, but we are going to be doing future webinars on our SketchUp workflow and our BIM 360 integration and much more. So stay tuned. Um, you should be on our newsletter, so we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. Um, the other question is, can you demo how to build a box as you showed on your website, which I believe is our massive tool? Sure. Um, maybe can Melissa or, you know, I could actually even just do this myself, but somebody else join me in this space if you are listening and we can, um, we can show you that. So basically, um, the wild, you probably saw Melissa and Nick playing around this with this, but you have a series of tools inside of the wild that connect to your hand. You know what? I'm just going to jump in myself. We'll, we'll go bold on this. Um, so let me go full screen. So, um, I actually have a headset right here. And you can see, um, so I was in 2D mode and flying around, but you can see I just joined directly in um, 
in VR headset or in my headset. And I have the ability now to um, move around. Now, actually, this is a fun thing to show you as well. Hey, Nick, what's up? So um, I'm going to show you that you can, for you guys, I, you can look at my first person view, but more, more useful than that is actually a third person view I can put you inside of. Um, which is much easier for you to look at than looking at, you know, what I'm looking at. And so now I can almost present to you directly, like from headset inside of virtual reality. But this will allow me to show you um, our tools. Um, so basically I can launch my, my tool panel here and to attach any of these tools, you just um, push into the tool and it attaches to your controller. And just like Nick's showing you here, now we have, um, uh, our massing tool allows you to create a simple cube. Um, the cube is uh, a, such a useful primitive. Um, it's very fast to tap fast to do, and then you can modify any of these cubes, delete them, you just toss them. You can select them and move any of the faces around, um, and then basically build more complex uh, objects uh, by using multiple cubes that then but then you can even um, use our, our group tool to group together. So all of these tools are super useful um, for that purpose of, of basically being able to um, prototype different ideas inside of this space, whether that's using, a, using our massing tool or our sketch tool or even our comment tool. Okay, we have one minute left, so okay. I think we need to wrap. Um, if you could answer in 20 seconds, Gabe, sure. is the wild looking at Oculus Quest for Enterprise? Oculus Quest, great question. Um, we support the Oculus Quest. Um, we're super excited about the Oculus Quest because it just lowers that barrier for getting into the wild. Um, it's so easy, it's, it's a cordless, for those that don't know, the Oculus Quest is a, is a wireless standalone virtual reality headset. Um, that you don't need a separate computer for and that you can use to access the wild just like I'm accessing, accessing it right now directly in um, virtual reality. You, um, you just put that headset on, you launch the wild and you come into it. Now what I love about the Oculus Quest is it, it changes the conversation from virtual reality being considered a conference room so solution, something that IT has to set up for you in a specialized you know, virtual reality cave to really a desktop solution or a solution that you can even travel with. You know, I often just carry mine in my backpack to a meeting and if I want to show somebody the wild, I just turn it on, pop it on my head or pop it on their head and they're inside of the wild. So it's super easy. All you need is Wi-Fi to connect to that to any space inside of the wild. So we're going to wrap it there. Okay, we're wrapping. Um, we're going to wrap it there. Um, thank you guys so much for attending this webinar. This was excited for us to do. And I'm actually, I'm looking at the attendance now. I'm very shocked. Um, <laughs> so I am surprised and really delighted that there's so much interest in the wild, um, interest to find out more, both from our customers and from, from new people to the wild. So thank you for that. If you'd like to find out more, please visit thewild.com or visit us on Twitter or any of the social networks at the wild XR um, and contact us there. We would be just delighted to, um, to give you an in-depth demo to talk about your specific use case if you go to thewild.com and hit that get started button. If you're a customer and you have questions, please reach out to us from the app itself. We are very glad to help you in any way we can. Um, really nail your workflow or improve your workflow or get you started with immersive collaboration. Thank you guys so much. This has been a pleasure. Uh, we'll follow up we with your face again? questions about the, um, about this, uh, how you like this and please uh, solicit or please give us feedback and we hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye.